can just remain standing when I explain. Um, so it's my practice to explain um, the sentence before I um, tell you the terms and, and explain the reasoning that I went through in reaching my decision. Um, so there's absolutely no doubt in this case that uh, a terrible tragedy happened on January 28th in which the lives of two families have been changed forever and I can't possibly articulate that in any more compelling way than the statements we heard here today from Timmy's family and the statements that your family and friends and support uh, provided to the court about what your actions did on that fatal day. Um, and I uh, agree, at least in part, with the defense's explanation. Well, let me back up one seven. One thing I took away from the remarks here today is um, the repeated question about why. Why did this have to happen? And I don't think anyone will ever know that for sure. But I, I think I have some insights into having watched this trial and having thought about this case a lot that explain what happened here and why this happened. And I agree in part with Attorney Faulkner's explanation that um, the, Timmy's murder was the result of a fatal combination of youth and, a, and alcohol. And, and of course, that's an important consideration. Um, but I think that's only part of the story. And I don't actually even think that's the biggest part of the story or explanation for what happened here. What happened in this case uh, is that Timothy Pouliot wouldn't back down when, he's, when he was confronted by a bully, namely you. He had the audacity to stand up to a man who was literally more than twice his size and who, because of his size, was used to getting his way. And he had the gall, and he had the gall to talk to your ex-girlfriend, and he had the gall not to back away when you confronted him the first time in that bar. And when he and his friends went back over to your ex-girlfriend and started bragging to them, that was too much for you. And that's when the physical confrontation began to escalate. And when Timmy's friend hit you, you flew into a rage. There was no doubt you were spoiling for a fight and you were not going to let these three guys get the better of you. And just like a bully, you hid behind a gun. And just like a bully, you put an end to Timmy's life by putting eight rounds into him to show people that no one was going to stand up to John DeLee and live to tell that tale. And if I had any doubt about your acts being motivated by that bullying, all of that doubt was erased by your conduct just two days ago at the jail. What I saw on that video is absolutely the acts of a bully. Someone stood up to you. Someone had the audacity to take your breakfast. A shrimp, a small guy who deserved who could live on snacks. And no, no one was going to stand up to John DeLee. And he got what he had coming to him. And you beat the heck out of that guy. And every school kid knows that bullies need to be punished to put an end to bullying. And your conduct deserves harsh punishment. And it deserves a significant sentence both for specific deterrence so that you finally get the message that someone is going to stand up to John DeLee and not take it anymore, and general deterrence that this kind of behavior is completely and utterly unacceptable. By all accounts, Timmy Pouliot was a kind-hearted person, and you put an end to that life. You And, and I, I, frankly, I don't Eve, I don't believe the show of remorse. Certainly your words in the immediate aftermath of this shooting show what you thought of him, that white Manchester trash or whatever the words you used were. But even the letter you wrote to the court uh, today or yesterday, just recently, show that th 
There's no true remorse here. Not once in that letter do you say, I'm sorry I killed Timmy. Instead you say, I'm very sorry for what happened, as if it's the acts of some other person, not your responsibility that ended his life. And for all of those reasons, the court does not find that the mitigating factors of youth and alcohol outweigh the aggravating factors in this case that warrant a significant sentence. Now with all that said, I have not um, adopted the state's recommendation and I have not adopted the defense's recommendation. I've crafted a sentence here that accomplishes the goals that I've explained in my remarks, but I've also crafted a sentence that's going to give you some opportunity to still have a life in front of you that is more than Timmy, Timmy Pouliot had. Had, obviously, he, he's deceased, who will never have, I should say. Um, and so the sentence I'm imposing in this case on the charge of um, knowing second degree murder is that you are sentenced to the New Hampshire State Prison not, for not more than life, no less than 27 years. You have uh, 406 days of pretrial confinement credit, and there is 150 days added to each year of the minimum portion of the sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. That sentence is stand committed, and it begins immediately. Um, restitution is not ordered in this case because it has not been requested, and court-appointed counsel fees have been waived. Um, you are, as part of this sentence, though, eligible for earn time credit. So that means that you can have up to, I believe it's 24 months of both the minimum and maximum portion of the sentence reduced for approved programming, dealing with issues, counseling, anger management, and other issues that um, will help with rehabilitation once you're released. Um, you are required as part of this sentence to participate meaningfully in all counseling, treatment, and education as required. You're prohibited from having any contact with the Pouliot family, and of course you have to be of good behavior. On the reckless conduct charge, um, this is, I have to say, obviously not as nearly close as serious, but it is not an insignificant um, conviction either and I think we heard today input on that point and the number of people outside that bar it's a miracle no one else was hurt in this incident um, so uh, the sentence I'm imposing reflects that as well and that you are sentenced to the state prison for not more than six years no less than three years the sentence is also stand committed and will be served consecutive to the sentence I just imposed as with the last sentence, uh, court-appointed counsel fees are waived. The conditions, though, of this sentence are that if you have um, no, um, if you commit no crimes, state or federal crimes, or any have any major disciplinary infractions at the prison uh, or other place of employment for a period of 15 years, starting today, um, for, for 15 years, then. Um, the, uh, this sentence, both the minimum and maximum, will be suspended in its entirety. So this is designed to give you the incentive to be of good behavior, to not do what you just did two days ago at the jail, and um, to um, obviously not uh, have any other major disciplinary infractions. The other conditions, so if this sentence is suspended, it would be suspended for a period of 10 years from the date um, of the, uh, the, so you will have to file an application to demonstrate to the court that you are com that you've complied with this condition, um, and um, if it is if the court grants that, then it will be suspended for a period of ten years from the date it is granted, uh, and it is the con if it's suspended the conditions were again meaningful participation in counseling treatment and education required by parole no contact with the Pouliot family, and of course, good behavior. Uh, do you have any questions about the terms of the sentences? The clerk will read to you your notice of your right to seek sentence review. John DeLay, you are hereby notified that you have the right to apply for the review of the state prison sentence imposed on you today, March 8, 2024. The application may be filed within 30 days after the date of the sentence. 
but not thereafter except for good cause shown. If you file such an application, your sentence will be reviewed by a board of three members who will be either judicial referees and or superior court judges. Review of the sentence may result in a decrease or increase of the minimum or maximum term within the limits fixed by law, or there may be no change in the sentence. A form for making application, if you wish to do so, is set forth on this notice. Uh, and the state also has the right to apply for sentence review and can obtain an application for that from the clerk's office, if they so desire. Mr. Dooley is remanded back to the custody of the sheriff and the court is in recess. Uh,